Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking this photo that I took at nighttime and we're gonna edit it and turn it into this photo. Now, this photo was actually a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be editing. And as you can see, the car is actually quite dark in this image. So I'm gonna show you a few of the ways that I bring that car up and as well, how we maybe denoise and align some of the colors. Now, if you care to see how I got this photo, you guys can click the link up here and it will direct you to the video of me shooting this photo. Now, if you guys are interested in taking a stab at this edit yourself, make sure to grab the raw photo down in the link in my description below. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is remove chromatic aberration and enable the lens profile correction. That'll take away the vignetting from the photo. As you guys can see, the settings up here was one over 60th of a second. I shot at 1.4 to keep my aperture as wide open as possible so I could limit the amount of ISO that I had to shoot. Now, I am gonna bring up the exposure to start and I'm actually just gonna boost it a ton just so I can get an idea of what's happening in the deep shadows now obviously you can see here we have quite a bit of noise so we're going to try and take that out a little bit later i think that's a good place to start with our exposure we'll bring down the highlights so we can keep all the details in that silver dragon signage up there let's bring up the shadows try not to bring in too much noise because we're going to use some of our filters later on to adjust that let's see what our whites do to that signage i want that signage to pop but i don't want it to be too blown out or overexposed. So I'm gonna try and find a nice balance there. And then holding option, we'll just drag our blacks down till we are not losing too much detail. And that looks good there. So from here, I'm actually just going to desaturate the image. But what I wanna show you is look at all these crazy colors in here. We've got oranges, we've got some purples and magentas in here. We've got blues coming in the headlights. So there's a lot of mixed colors that I'm gonna to wanna to deal with. And I'm actually just gonna bring those back kind of later. So here we are going into the tone curve. I'm gonna drag this down to see if we can again, just keep some of the exposure in the signage there. Bring up the mid-tones, which is pretty much where our car is going to land. Let's see if we can pop that back up a little bit. Keep it nice and poppy. And then maintaining contrast down here, which I don't think I'll need to do too much. And maybe I'll go back up and mess with the contrast slider later. But I just want to make sure that's popping. Then we've got a nice bright image. So that looks pretty good there. So here we are. We're in kind of the color section here. So I kind of want to move some of these magentas and purples over to align with the rest of the image. So I'm going to see what's happening here. So obviously we've got a lot of purple on the side of the car, which maybe we could go to the blue side so we can get some color contrast. And by that, I mean, obviously we've got lots of reds up here. So I want color contrast in adding the opposite color to make the car stand out of the image. And let's see what's happening with the magentas. Yeah, we got lots of those too. So uh, if I bring it too far over, I don't really like it. So maybe we'll just align it with the red side. So it just kind of fits in with the rest of the photo. And if we wanted, we could take the blues and move them a little bit more over to the aqua side if we wanted to have that kind of like teal and orange look. So from here, I'm gonna mess with some of the sliders just to pick out the colors. I actually don't love how much that's coming in. So I'm gonna just drag that down a little bit and let's see what happens here. Just gonna try and make that car look white. Looks good there. And let's see what happens with our lights if we punch them up a bit. And I often look up in this corner here just to see kind of what's happening with the photo. It gives you a smaller image, which most of us are gonna see on our phones and gives you a really good idea of kind of the overall picture. So let's play with some luminance here because we know we've got lots of blue on the car. So I wanna keep the detail in the headlights. We're gonna take this purple slider and we're gonna drag that up because we know we've got lots of it in the car. So we're just gonna use that naturally to pull the car out of the frame. And the magentas, yeah, we'll just pop those a little bit and let's see what we can do with some of this lighting to make sure it's popping. That's too low. That's maybe too high. And lots of yellows in there. So I'm actually, because the dragon here is catching the yellows, and I think that looks kind of gross. So I'm actually gonna come up here and adjust the yellows to again, just align with what's happening with the photo. Don't want it green. Let's just move it over to the red side keeping all the colors looking the same and looking good. Okay, so color grading, this place for me is where the magic happens for my personal look on Instagram. This is how I can make sure that all my photos look the same no matter what. So I often put 220 in the shadows. Many of you guys will already know this. Um, and 10 in the saturation. My midtones, I don't put any colors in there, but I do drag up the midtones. It'll just add this nice little pop on the car as you can see. So drag that up to taste. And as you can see, we're starting to introduce quite a bit of noise in here. So we're going to deal with that in just a second. 
the highlights I like to go again color contrasting you'll see my highlights are up here in the orange tones and my low lights are down here in the blue tones and then from there I can blend those together nicely and then choose which side of the balance I want to go so do I want it to be more on the warmer side towards the highlights in the 35 or down towards the cooler side and I kind of just maybe going to keep it in the middle actually because it looks cool. So moving down into sharpening, I do want to have this image quite sharp. If you click this little box, the more sharpening you add, the more noise you're going to add into the image. So we actually want to mask out the sharpening. And again, if you hold option and drag that mask over, you can see exactly what we're sharpening. And you can see all the noise in this area. So we're just going to try and sharpen it just the car and make sure that we're not sharpening any of that noise. And then from there, Obviously with nighttime photography, you want to be careful with your noise reduction. So we've got this kind of spot picked there. We're just going to go up until we see a pretty significant reduction, but this can often really soften, often soften your photos. And you have to be really careful not to make it look too mushy. And especially if you have um, people in your image, people will start to look really bad, really fast with that noise reduction. So just be careful because it's just a car. Um, it actually doesn't look too bad. And as long as we're sharpening the edges significantly, then I think we'll be able to get away with it. And again, if we zoomed out and looked at what your average person is going to be looking at, if I post this to Instagram, most people aren't going to notice. So that's one way you can use noise reduction and just be careful not to overuse it. Now I am going to boost up the calibration here. This is just going to add a lot of life to the colors. So from here, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to use some of our filters to make sure that we're drawing our attention to the car. So I grab a graduated filter. We're going to reset that, drag it from the bottom. We're going to bring the exposure down just to make sure that our eye is drawn to the car. No one needs to see what's happening on the road there. Let's try this side. Let's see what's happening here. Maybe make it look like a street light or something. So after we're done with our graduated filters, I'm going to take a radial filter, make sure that it's feathered nicely, drag it over top of the car, just like this. And we're going to start to add exposure. And we're always just trying to draw attention to our car and make the car one of the brighter parts of the image. So let's see what happens if we boost our shadows. I want to be careful again not to do it too much. And looking up here, it looks like it is popping out of the image a lot nicer than it did before. Next thing we're going to do is take the brush and just brush in some of the details of the car that we want people to see. So the front here looks really cool. Make sure we can see those and maybe even just add some exposure to these lines of the car. Bring out the wheels. It's a really, really subtle difference, but it does help to just kind of draw more attention to the car. And there we go, there's the before and after the brush. So kind of when I get to this point, what I do is I just check my overall contrast, make sure that the car is really popping. So there you go, guys. There is a pretty quick before and after of editing this photo. We did take away a lot of the noise. We were still able to make the car stand out of the image, which is super important in car photography uh, and making sure that all of our highlights and stuff from that Silver Dragon are still standing out. So I'm pretty happy with how this image turned out uh, as well is if you're not happy with how I did this one, you could take a look at some of these presets and you could even build your own look using some of the presets. Again, I'll link those down below. But otherwise, I hope that you guys learned something from me editing this nighttime photo. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button for me because it does help the algorithm a ton. Consider leaving a comment down below with what you guys like about this photo or don't like about this photo. Maybe you would do something different. So let me know down below. As well, one last little thing. I did just pick up this guy here. It's a Mac Mini. Uh, so I am going to be setting this up and trying to do some edits for photography and videography. So if you're interested in kind of following the car photography journey, some tech tips, gear, whatever, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and watch more videos like this. But otherwise, guys, I always appreciate your time and appreciate you watching and hope that you did learn something. And um, yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.